everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great day. Hope you're having a great week. Uh, I'm gonna get right to it because I'm headed uh, to uh, meet with some of the guys. But look, first and foremost, don't forget that academic apartheid, not academic apartheid, uh, getting these books mixed up. The War on Wealth is dropping at the end of the month. Um, I went to great depths to uncover the many ways that we are impacted in our desire to build wealth, our quest to build wealth, and some of the things you would never imagine, like serial force displacement um, and uh, how young black males are socialized, so many other things I touch on. So if you haven't ordered your book, the link is going to be in that. But what I want to focus on now is black man lead, black man lead. I've been consistently for the past, probably since before the new year. Talk, matter of fact, it was. I started this in the new year and we still haven't hit the goal that I was shooting for, for New Year's. But anyway, we've been talking about a fundraiser and talking about black man lead and people wonder, do, is there other things I do? If you wanna know all the work I do in the community, go to the Odyssey Project 21.top and you can see the work I've been doing for years and it definitely does extend beyond black men but I have a passion for building strong black men because we need them there are 1.5 million black men first of all missing when you have that many men missing you have the models to which young black males will emulate manhood and when they're absent they're figuring it out on their own as they go they're figuring it out and they're being force fed false ideologies false images false representations of what black manhood is. Uh, we are getting a lot of violence. We're getting a lot of self-indulgence. We're getting a lot of misogyny. We're getting a lot of uh, irresponsibility as it comes to our progeny. We're getting a lot of that because that's what's being put in front of them. And there are not enough of us modeling it. So the normal uh, vein through which young black males are socialized isn't there and so you have to create a bridge that makes up for that you can't sit up and just keep saying we don't have enough men our men are you know uh, we somebody asked me a matter of fact it was dr michael blanchard it wasn't somebody it was dr michael blanchard and it was about 10 years ago between nine and ten years ago and he asked me uh why is it that i think blacks consistently lack progress and I think what he was asking he was asking for more historical technical psychological sociological answer and my answer was we have simply become the most comfortable uncomfortable people on the planet and that's it right now we are literally complacent with our discomfort and so we don't move, we don't act. We haven't, well, I don't know what the threshold is of, because normally what makes people move is discomfort. Discomfort, whether it's the fear of failure or the fear of setback or the, the, the discomfort that comes with knowing there's more and you're not getting it. Some people strive towards pleasure to relieve the discomfort. Some people strive away from pain, two totally different things to, to, relieve, the, to relieve the discomfort. I don't know what it's gonna take for blacks to get actually engaged in our empowerment. We talk about empowerment as if, if we talk about it enough, one day it's just gonna happen. No, empowerment is the result of actions taken along a consistent line and tension uh, 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 or continuum that leads to somewhere. It's going to require strategy. It's going to require an agenda. It's going to require protocols. It's going to require us to get out of our current way of thinking because that's how we're being dominated. It's by our minds and we need to focus on it. One of the biggest things I'm talking about now, one of the biggest things that I'm pushing is the theme, the mind unleashed. Why? Because if you unleash the mind, nobody can control you. Nobody can dominate. Nobody can manipulate. And we're not doing that. And then we're trusting our, our, the minds of our young black boys to the system, to the streets, to a broken education system that alienates them from the day they touch down. Five years old, the teachers already iron them for uh, special education referrals because they're uncomfortable with them in the room. So they are, they are pushing, plus there's double the money for special education. So let's push them in there. While we're at it, 
Let's diagnose them with ADHD. Let's diagnose them with oppositional defiant disorder. Why? Because we can medicate that. Now you have your five-year-old son in special education being ostracized and alienated and doped up on psychotropic drugs. Those are schedule two drugs. And who is it on? It's on us. It's a cover upon us to take control. When I talk about black men lead, I'm talking about so much more than some program where kids come hang out. This is a program designed to socialize young black males. It was Frederick Douglass that says, it's easier to build strong children than it is to fix broken men. Let me tell you from a person who does it, it's absolutely true. It's much easier to find children who are healthy, who are in a good space mentally, and build on that. Protect them, isolate them, build, socialize, strengthen male and females, and get them to a healthy, a sense of identity, a healthy sense of purpose, a healthy place where they understand the power of who they are, their history, their heritage, and the capacity they have to set the gauge for their future. That's so important. I have been asking for support for so long, but we talk about it. You know, I get so many emails that praise the work I do. I get so many, and don't get me wrong, it's nothing like having somebody tell you, I see what you're doing, you know, and especially with people who are literally telling me I help change their lives with, with whatever I do and wherever I've been and how I've touched them. I, I don't stop doing that. I, lo I love it. I don't, I don't need it to live, but I'm not going to take it for granted. Let me put it that way. It means a lot to me, but that cannot be transformed into resources that are necessary to make these kids' lives better and set the course of the future of the black race. Because we keep saying the children are the future. Our children are the future. The children are the future. This is how we handle our future. This is what we do. We leave them out there. And yes, I know they're not our biological kids. We got to get back to the village mentality. And one of the greatest victories the white system done was ushering us into individualism. By far, I can find so many problems and I can connect it to individualism. Even consumerism is just the outstretched arm of individualism. I, 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 and we have lost ourselves. There's no visit, vi village, there's no community, there's no love. And now let me tell you what has happened. Not only have we allowed ourselves to become so individualized that we are absent of community, it's starting to seep into the home and the families are now being destroyed at an even greater rate. The way we spurn marriage is absolutely absurd because what? I ain't got time for that. I'm going to do me. If it don't suit me, I'm going to do me. Well, my thing is nothing is going to suit you all the time. I'm not talking about being in an abusive relationship. I'm not talking about being with someone who mistreats you, who handles you. And if the understanding in the relationship is monogamy, it, then they shouldn't be cheating on you. None of that stuff should be in the relationship. But sitting up and getting through problems is a part of life. That's how you build relationships. That's how you got some people, you got some cats out here that got more loyalty to their boys, to their wives. You got women out here got more loyalty to their girls and they men. And they, they sit out and they got girls night out and dudes night out. And all they do is sit up and talk about how horrible the other person is to people who don't care because everybody's caught up in themselves. And then we're passing that on to our babies. And what's happening is they're developing an individualized mindset, but they don't have the capacity to fulfill the things they want. And so they start acting out in their adolescence. That's the violence you see. They're killing one another at, at unbelievably early ages. They're, they're killing one another. They have no understanding of the value of life because they don't value their own because we didn't properly socialize them. We didn't give them a purpose within the village. We didn't give them a place within the village. We didn't set them up to be a part of what's going on in the village. So they burning it down. And we don't understand why. African proverb says that if the village does not embrace a child, he will burn it down to feel its warmth. Let me tell you something. We have to own what these young boys are doing. I, we don't want to. We just want to sit up and say, oh, that's horrible. Oh, that's sad. That's terrible. He's evil. All this stuff. 
He's a product of what we failed. He's the product of our failure. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna have to do something. I've been telling you that there are five primary components that influence African-American, adolescent, and young adult male violence. I've studied it since the 90s. And what I can tell you is this, that the five are the most, from, from the top to the bottom, the most influential, the feeling of being disrespected, prison full of dudes that felt disrespected. Number two, the lack of proper racial socialization. Number three, being a victim of violence themselves. Number four, witnessing violence in some place, sometime in their lives. Number five, urban hassle. Again, well, I'll explain. Urban hassle is all the things that inner city kids deal with all the time. Sirens and gunfire uh, all times of the day and night. Cars screaming down the street all times of the day of the night. Loud music while they're trying to sleep before school day. Uh, on, on, the, on the East Coast and the Midwest, L trains running all different times of, of the day and night. Just rattling and all of that noise pollution and, and everything else. And navigating gang violence to get to and from school. Navigating drug use to get to and from school. That's urban hassle. That increases. Those are things that a lot of times you can't control because that's where they live. What you can control, the one thing that has shown the most promise in all my work and all my studies is proper socialization. That's why I created Black Men League. Why? Because if I can socialize them into who they're supposed to be, they'll like, they will fight to live into it and walk into it. If you give a person an identity, they will walk it. But when they, they don't have one, they're looking for someone to tell them who they are. Somebody told them, man, if you get this paper and get this Benz, get this Maybach, get this, this Bentley, get, get all this, they're going to love you. You're going to be the man. You're going to be appreciated. You're going to have all the ladies you want. And, and the biggest way to prove you're a man is banging the ladies. And so they're going to be out there doing all that. And at the same time, hurting our daughters because they don't know how to be men. And then all we'll do is sit up and complain about it. No, it's time to take action. I am doing a super push over the next three days for the remainder of this week, a super push. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking to raise $5,000. That $5,000 is gonna be invested in developing a national network. We need to be in multiple cities. I have people contacting me from all over the United States about this. And I give as much of myself as I can. I always have, I give all of myself in time and money. This program has been, uh, 90 plus percent funded by Rick. Nope. I mean, and the people who give, trust me, I appreciate you. I know you and I'm there. And all I'm trying to do is raise $5,000. That $5,000 won't go far, but it will give a boost and it will give people who need to be interested in this a sense that people will get involved. A lot of people who can pull major strings won't pull them because they're looking and say, you can't do this by yourself. You can't even get people to give. You can't even get, people have a different way of looking at things. There are some things that can be done, but people need to see, hey, what you gonna do when you get out there? You gonna be out there by yourself? These few people that's backing you, that's, what are you gonna do if we can get, the, what I'm trying to get you to understand is this. It's only our responsibility. It's nobody's responsibility. And for the people that want to say, well, why don't you try to get this? Why don't you get grant? Let me tell you something. This is what I can tell you. I've been doing this for a while. I've been doing this about 30 years. Let me tell you something. You can get all the government funding you want if your program looks good but doesn't really deliver. Look in Ferguson. Look in Wilmington, Delaware. Look in Chicago. Atlanta and check out those cities and look at all the millions that are funded funneled into these programs and look at the rates. Wilmington had, one point had the highest murder rate per capita. Wilmington, Delaware. I was called several times to come up there, but you know what happened? The men up there are too busy fighting and ego tripping. That not to, they, they can't receive help. The women are begging and the men don't want it because they want to be the dude to fix it. Do you see how that stuff works? I don't care about getting the credit. I want the results. So I'll come up there, teach you how to do it, leave it with you, you can call it what you want, rename it, I don't care, but we need to be doing something. So I'm challenging everybody. Don't pass it, I'm challenging everybody, I'm challenging you. Here's the crazy thing, 
a $5,000 fundraiser to literally change the lives of black men across the United States. There's a person that could, that's watching this that could actually donate that. To sit up and say, you know what? This is what I'm going to do for the next year. This is me. And yet, program struggle. My program isn't the only one. Any program that actually works, that's actually empowering and strengthening blacks, watch it. It won't get funded. I guarantee you it won't get funded. Why? Because they benefit from the failures of our black boys. They're, they're, they're literally uh, determining uh, prison beds, how many prisons need to be built, uh, it, all the different ways they're going to make money off the failures of these boys. Why in the hell would they invest in making sure they're whole and then making them competitors of their children? Michael Mack said, never trust your enemy to educate your child and we've been doing it it's time out for it so that's it look i'm gonna be pushing this five thousand dollars i am pushing this i expect that it's going to be what it normally is but i'm not quitting i'm coming i'm pushing because i am the one getting the calls i'm the one getting the emails i'm the one saying hey can you check this out i'm the one saying hey look hey bro man i've got brothers coming to me full-grown young men coming to me and saying they, they want to be mentored and I'm taking every last one of them. I don't know how I'm going to facilitate it if they keep coming, but I'm I'm passing the torch to some brothers who want to fight and they're out there. They need to know people have their back. They need to know that we can get out there and we can make a difference. Nobody's going to try if they think they can. So this is me asking you to actually buckle in. Let's get this target. It, if we do, it will be the first time it's ever happened. I've done this since the 90s on me. Back then, it was a lot easier because it was a lot more cash flow. But I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to go broke doing it either, but I'm not going to stop. This is my passion. This is my love. And some people say, well, it's your passion, your love. You do something about it. That's the problem. That's the problem. We're so damn selfish. We're so called me, me, me. I'm glad I didn't do that because it's so many people in the last month who have contacted me and said, I was giving up. I was about to commit suicide. I lost hope after I lost my husband. I was going to do this. You helped me when I got out of prison. And that's another thing. I'm stopping the recidivism rate. I'm, I'm going to make a difference. I'm asking you to help me make it be a huge difference. On that note, I got to get out. I'm late for this darn girl. All right. I got to go.